Good day, Grade Elevens. Welcome to this next lesson in which we're going to do carry on with the long questions of the control test for week 30. It says question four: Hydrogen gas and oxygen gas react to form water according to the following balanced equation. So we've got two hydrogens plus oxygen gives you water plus some energy. And it says the activation energy for this reaction is 1370 kilojoules per mole. It says define the term activation energy. So you can see there is another theory question. So you guys really need to learn your theory. And basically activation energy is just the minimum energy required for a reaction to take place. It's pretty easy, okay? So please go learn it. Now it says sketch the potential energy versus reaction coordinate graph for the above reaction. So what are we looking at? We're looking at either an endothermic or an exothermic graph, but the energy here is being given off. It's been given off, which means it's an exothermic graph, which means we're going to start up here, go up to the activation energy and come down. And what's nice about this question is they actually tell you, they give you hints as to what graph to draw, and they actually tell you what labels they want. So if you leave these labels out, then you're being silly, because obviously there are marks allocated to these labels. So it says, sketch a potential energy versus reaction. Blah, 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 blah. Clearly label the axes and indicate the following on the graph. Delta H, E, A, reactants and products, and the activated complex. Okay, so this is obviously your potential energy. You're going to write it out properly, but I won't. In kilojoules per mole. And this is your reaction coordinates. Okay, you guys need to write these out properly. Now, this is your reactant, and this is obviously your product, so those reactants and products. And this, obviously, your activated complex. So, this here, X, is your activated complex. Now, the activation energy is the difference between the reactants and delta X. So that bit there is the activated energy, activation energy EA. Your delta H is your enthalpy of the reaction, which is really the difference between the products and the, so your enthalpy, which is the energy given off in this case, is delta H. Right. So there we go. We've drawn our graph. Now it says, write down the value of the heat of the reaction. Well, we know that this here is the activation energy, which is 1370. And we know that it gave off 241,8 kilojoules per mole. Okay? So therefore, what is the heat of the reaction? It is minus 241,8 kilojoules per mole kilojoules per mole. So that is how much energy was given off. So that there is the heat of the reaction. Now it wants activation energy for the following reaction. And basically what we've got to do is realize that this is the, so sorry, for the following reaction. Water gives you hydrogen plus oxygen. So what is this? This is actually the reverse reaction, the reverse reaction. So therefore, the activation energy for that is going to be this delta H, which is 241,8, plus this activation energy, which is 1370. So this is going to be 1370 plus 241,8, which equals 1611,8 kilojoules per mole. Okay, now let's look at question five, the last question on the page, on the test. It says, methanoic acid, HCOOH, is the simplest organic acid, is a weak acid. It dissolves readily in water and says, define a lowry bronsted acid. So the whole thing is to know, firstly, what an acid is, and then secondly, know the definition of the lowry bronsted which is really just that an acid is a proton donor. It gives away a proton. In other words, it gives away a hydrogen plus ion. What do you understand by weak? By weak, remember, we mean that it does not dissociate completely. It does not dissociate very easily, okay? Or completely. It doesn't break up completely. Right. Now it says, copy and complete the following equation. We've got HC. I'm just going to go like this so we've got space. 
So we've got HCOOH plus water. So what is happening is this is an acid and the water is acting as a base. So then we end up with this becoming H3O plus because that's its conjugate acid. And then you've got HCOO minus and that is the conjugate base. Now it says water is amphiprotic to term the term amphilite. An amphilite is a substance which can act as both an acid or a base depending on the situation. So in this case above where you've got HCCOH plus water, this is acting as an acid and water is acting as a base. Oh, and there's a question. It says, what is the water behave as in the above equation? And it's acting as a base, right? Now it says, consider two acid-base reactions below and answer the questions which follow. So you've got hydrochloric acid plus water gives you chloride plus water again. And water plus, well, that's not pure water. Water plus ammonia gives you ammonium plus an hydroxyl. And that's a hydronium, by the way. It says, in a lab, one beaker contains a solution involving reaction one. And another beaker contains a solution reacting, um, a solution containing reaction two. The learner wants to test the solution to determine whether it's acidic or alkaline. Give the general term for any substance that can be used to test whether it's acid or base. That is just an indicator. The acid, the learner can check if it's an acid or an, it's an indicator, using an indicator. Which one of the two solutions will have a pH below the 7? The more acidic a substance is, the lower the pH, the lower the pH. So therefore, the one that's going to be acidic, and it says which one of the two solutions above is going to end up with an acidic one, which is obviously going to be equation one, because that's an acid and water, whereas this is water plus base. And it says if if HCl reacts with ammonia in a sealed container, a salt is formed. Give the name and formula of that salt. So they say ammonia reacts with HCl and they want to know what the salt is and the salt is ammonium chloride ammonium chloride and there we go grade 11s we've finished going through this control test grade 11s please remember that this is all just revision so if you didn't understand what we were doing you need to go back to the weeks where we actually covered this work properly and then go revise and then go do the questions in the two enable system have a great day